What's up, guys? This is Crack Cobain, and I got my boy Kilo here with me. Yeah. And you're watching the Camino Corner. Uh, today, we're going to speak about Kilo's company, Dark Life Co. Uh, but to get it started, I wanted him to introduce himself and tell, uh, tell you guys how we know each other. Shit. Uh, you said introduce myself first? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Kilo. Um, yeah, I'm just Kilo, for real. Um, yeah, me and Quan, we met back when I was like fresh out of high school. Like when I first graduated, I was working at Starbucks and we was coworkers and shit. And, you know, it was a little, little Starbucks and Pinecrest. So it wasn't too many uh, black people there, but, you know, it was like three of us in the store. Three store. of us, yeah. It was three of us in the store. So we all just clicked. And yeah, man, we've been rocking out ever since, man. For sure. Yeah, I, um, I ended up going to Starbucks because I was turning 26, and I was like, damn, I got to get some insurance because yeah. <laughs> I was getting off my mom's plan. Damn. And, um, yeah, when I, when I first met Kilo, it was me, him, and, and our boy Mike, which went to high school with me, and we, uh, yeah. we just had a little vibe in that story. It was, it was a real good experience there. Nah, for sure. Um, damn, you was 26 when I met you? Yeah, bro. I'm 26 now. Yeah. That's so That's crazy. That's crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. From, the, from the first day I met, bro, like, we, we instantly clicked. And he's always had like a serious entrepreneur spirit. And um, from when I first met him, he was working on Dark Life. Yeah. And he, uh, I want him to tell you guys a little bit more about what it is and how he like came up with it and things of that sort. So back in high school, yeah, back in high school, I went to school. F I went to Rob Morgan for sound engineering. And then um, uh, Our Future, Our Future was popping off at the time. Like right. they had like just pop, matter of fact. And like I really, I really like what they were doing. Um, as far as like, it was a group of friends just uh, just having fun, enjoying themselves, and just being creative. So I wanted, I wanted that. So um, I had, I had my group of friends, and we, like, we needed a name. And originally, like the name was gonna be called um, Black Jesus. It was gonna be called Black Jesus. Didn't get crucified. He got shot, but. Um, I thought I was like, even for me, I thought I was like, eh, that's a little much. You feel me? So then I'm at, I'm at the falls. One day I'm chilling. Right. And then a little, it was a jet in front of me. He, he like fell. And like, you know, intrusive thoughts. I was like, dumbass kids. And I was like, oh, Dak. And I was like, oh, dark. Like, that shit just came. Like, it, were, it really wasn't no thought process. So it was just dark, dumbass, rich kids. And then I went back to school and I had told a shorty to like write dark life on my book bag. Right. And then she said, she said, you want me to spell life with an I or with a Y? I was like, oh, shit, like, throw the Y in there. You feel me? And then later, like, I had created a meaning for the for the, for the life, um, which means live young forever. But, yeah, we were just some kids at Robert Morgan um, making music. Um, I had built the studio at uh, my senior year of high school. I had a kid out of Robert Morgan. I went to, to Killian. But... During that same time, I had got a job at the movie, so I saved up like a couple paychecks, and I had built up. I built a studio in my in my crib. Right. Um, and then, like in theory, it was like all the homies would come over and um, we would make music and shit. But shit really didn't. It really it didn't it didn't pan out the way I wanted it to. Um, Cause I don't know, like. Like niggas don't have the same dreams as you, and I get that. That's how that's how my first situation was. I um before ECMG, um we had track trappers in similar situation. ECMG was born from track trappers not working, so I get that completely. Yeah. So um, yeah, we like I kind of just fell off from the music. Um, but even like but but even back then, back in back then in high school, like I had made like a couple shirts and some windbreakers, and like. It was really just for the homies, like for for us. But like other people wanted to buy it, so I sold it. But that was just that was just what I did in high school, and I kind of like um, let it go for a while, really until until COVID until COVID popped off. Right. And I had got that first stem, and I'm like, I was gonna I was gonna give it to I was gonna give it to Shorty, like my Shorty at the time. I was gonna get her this the bread because I didn't need it, mm -hmm. and she like she was behind on some bills or some shit. But she didn't want it because we had just broke up. So she was like, nah, like, I don't want your help. I'm like, all right, smooth. And I just put all that shit into dark life. And I just I had, I had just started dropping and dropping after that. Um, but, 
like right now, right now where I'm at with the brand is I'm kind of transitioning f- away from it be- because I felt like it was something I was doing like in my youth and like as I'm growing and maturing, I'm like re I'm com- I'm completely rebranding. I don't know about like if I'm done completely with Dark Life because right. that's like that's like my child, you know. Yeah. But right now, is, um, my new brand is called Perico. It's Which fire. Which something that you actually had on the Dark Life originally. Yeah, I did. Damn, yeah. you knew that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So then yeah, so under Dark Life, I wanted to create a luxury brand. Like 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 Polo Black. You know, like they got Definitely. Polo Ralph Lauren, right. Polo Black. So I was gonna do Perico under Dark Life Co. But as I started creating more with Perico, I I didn't want to put it under anything. I just kinda wanted it to be its own entity. It's kinda like maybe because I'm a I'm a little brother and like I, I never wanted to be viewed as like my my brother's little brother. Like, Understandable. I, I I made that clear to the point where like there's a lot of people that they they know me and my brother and they won't even know we related. I just kind of like because you wanted I, to be your yeah, own man. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. So that's why. So with Perico, I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't put him on the dark life. I had to give it his own. I had to give it his own thing. Right. I actually like the way that you um. You started the branding from that from from day one, because Dark Life was like more of the rocket. Yeah. And then for Perico, you came with Dang. the bird, and mm-hmm. I was like, okay. Yeah. I was like, bro's actually getting into the point of being like a Polar Ralph Lauren, yeah, or like even like a Banana Republic, Dang where you shit. had your own logo, yeah, that was specific that you could throw on like polos and stuff like that. I was like, okay, I see where he's going with that. The bird, so, the bird going crazy, yeah. man. It'd be funny because like like everything in the works, but like. I'm like marketing for it, so every time like I do anything, like I just throw a little bird emoji and shit. Right. But it was funny because like I, it was this one situation I was in, and the girl like she like, who the fuck like who the fuck is this bitch like who who was this bird for? Ooh, wow, wow. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, like this is what? Branding, like though. this is like <laughs> what? Like you don't know marketing, lady? Like you know it's funny we uh we low key got ahead of what I was gonna ask you because I was gonna ask you. Um, if you could redo everything now, knowing what you know, what would you do? And you're kind of already doing that. Well, if I could redo everything as far as Dark Life? Like, if you could restart, like, brand new from scratch, knowing what you know from Dark Life. Like, what would you do differently? I just stay focused. I just stay focused. Um, because I feel like Dark Life wasn't as successful as it should have been. Because when, when I, when I gained the traction that I... When I was, I, cause I, when I gained the traction, right, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't keep the consistency. I didn't keep the consistency. I was, I was being a man in the world and handling other priorities, and I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't never able to give Dark Life my all. So I feel like that's where it kind of failed. I, w- I wouldn't say failed, cause you definitely dropped some fire pieces. Yeah, I own you. multiple pieces from Dark Life. Appreciate that. And appreciate every time that. I wear them, I do get complimented on it. Appreciate that. Especially appreciate that. The beanie. Funny, funny. Not oh, even the, just the, the beanie. The Yacht Club. The Yacht Club. The Yacht Club. And yeah. it's funny because the name on, on the Yacht Club is same shorty. Who you talking about? Oh, yeah, Which, yeah, yeah. Uh, shorty, it, yeah. That, no. Which is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, I'm the first time seeing that on the website. <laughs> and, and I died laughing because... Yeah. We all know each other. Cause yeah, real she's lover boys through the job and shit. Yeah, yeah. Shouts to her, man. Shout out to her. Yeah, she was good people. Yeah, she was. But, but, um. So, what was your three favorite products that you've released on Dark Life? Under Dark Life, yeah. Um, the flags for sure. Fire. The flags was like, cause I don't know, like I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a creator that that I just like creating i don't really care like money is cool don't get me wrong but like if i like if i could get shit for free and sell it for, like give it away for free i would like right i'd be i'd be mostly um like i like i like the flags because the flags it was inexpensive and it was a way to get people involved like, i think that was my favorite piece ever because people who never even wanted to shop wanted a flag and i'm like nah members only like you don't got no you don't got no merch like you want a flag that was like, that was a staple piece for sure i remember um i don't know what piece it was i got from you it might have been 
it might have been uh, the, the sweatsuit. It, it might have been block, the yacht it was club. The block, it was a black sweatsuit. Nah, it it might have been. It might have been that. And I got. It was uh, a gray. Yeah, I opened up gray. the. I opened up the uh, the packaging and the flag was in. I'm like, oh shit, okay, yeah. this was up. Yes, sir. Yes, what, sir. What would be another piece? I know. Um, um, the yacht club for sure. For sure. Um, Suzy sweaters. Um, it's funny though because that piece, I had like I kind of took from um, from like an old uh, Disney shirt. Oh, okay. And. It's not it's not a hundred percent confirmed, but Rod Wave, uh he 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 did some merch for for one of his tours and they right. and they they ripped it off of me. Oh wow. Yeah, like I, I mean, had people think these artists don't be paying attention, but they do. So if you have something that's, that's having some traction, so it's so, it's gonna happen. So so the way the way the way I feel like it happened. And I don't know, like I like there was a the dude that designed the piece for Rod Wave. Mm -hmm. He went to Coral Reef. Okay, so we we, we have some mutuals, yeah. Right. And even one of the models, one of the models in the yacht club, like they follow each other. So when I seen it, and then I got put it on Instagram, like this is crazy. And then one of my cousins was like reached out to me, like, oh, I know the guy that that, that designed that for him. Right. So he showed me the guy on Instagram, so I followed him. But he never followed back, so we never was able to talk about what happened. But I'm pretty sure he took it from me because it was like it's just no way. Like, right. like it was the exact same. It said yacht club and everything. Like it had the duck and everything too. No, they had the duck. It oh, had okay. a different. It had a different logo, but it it was the exact same setup. Oh wow! Like the exact same setup, bro. I promise you. But I forgot what look what 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 animal or whatever the hell mm -hmm. he had behind it. But it wasn't a duck. But it was it was yacht club. But it was the exact same. Font layout, everything was exactly the same. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. And then, so that's two pieces: flag, yacht club, and the single father shirts for sure. Single father. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up. <laughs> I feel like uh, the single father shirts. So you, you spoke on well, you, uh, you had single father stuff. Yeah. Before you actually started Become putting a, out yeah. dark life products. Yeah. Because like back, right. when we was at, back when we was at Starbucks, you had I had a single father shirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, and, and it's funny because I feel like I used to say, "Bro, I fuck with that shirt so hard," and I feel like we kind of like manifested being single fathers yeah. in the yeah, way. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Definitely manifested that shit, bro. But like at the top, right? So when I was in when I was in high school, yeah, like I used to drive, and then like I had OJT or whatever, so I get out early mm. senior year. So I used to pick my little sister up from school, right? So like you know, my parents they working and shit, and like. It's really like, not not like not like on no sad story or no shit, but like it was it was it was me and my sister. Like we like I I pick her up from school, take her to get some food. I met all her games because she was in middle school at the time, so she used to like do basketball, soccer. She played every like everything that that school had to offer. She played it. Okay. And I was there like, but and my parents was at work, so it was just me by myself at most of the shits. Right. And I even like I would even cook for her and everything. So that's that's how that single father shit actually started. Like when I was on Snapchat, and I just be like, "Oh, single father low. Like this is my <laughs> single father adventures today. Like this is what we doing. Right. Like it had nothing to do with like actually being a father. Yeah. Just, but being but a, now, being an older sibling is like being a father before you nah, actually it become is. one. So it is. I get that sure. completely. It could be. It could be. Yeah. Like, if you do it right, bro. Because some people, some people, some you people. You know my siblings. So you know I've, I've been nah, on that. For like, sure. You've been that. You've yeah. been that. <laughs> You've been that for sure. To the to the point where even like my little god brother, um, everybody thought that he was my son for the longest. Yeah. And oh like, yeah, I did. I thought yeah, he even was your son. even now he's like he's in middle school now, mm -hmm. and it's to the point where if this man needs homework done and he can't figure it out, he facetimes me. He's like, "Bro, I need help with this." So I I get that completely. A hundred percent. And that's like that's part of being an older sibling. hundred percent. So you flipping that into the single father thing that makes a lot of sense. Um. One thing I wanted to know, uh, it's a lot of fast, like fast fashion going on right now. Facts. Um, how do you plan on keeping your brand uh, sustainable and upholding like high quality standards moving forward? I, the direction I'm moving in now, because with Dark Life, it was like I had a color scheme that I, I wanted to stick with because I just I wanted to brand that color scheme into mm -hmm. people's mind to the point where like that was my goal i'm like when you see these colors 
even if it's not dark life, I want you to think about dark life. I want you to see these colors out in the world and say, they trying to be like dark life. But now I'm trying to make timeless pieces. Like I'm not I'm not saying like that I'm ignoring trends or I'm following trends. I'm not like I see them, they're cool. Some of them, some of them I like. Like I like the I like the crop look. Okay. Like, I like that. I like the crop look, but like flare bottoms, like not a fan. I'm not feeling it. Not a fan of it. Stack jeans, not really a fan of it. Um so yeah, like my goal right now is to make um timeless pieces that you know it might not be what's exactly trending or popping right now but it's, some sh- it's something that's clean and smooth you'll be able to wear it now and more importantly you'll be able to wear it 10 20 30 years from now it'll be something that your grandkids will find in the closet and be like damn like you got this you got this custom pedico piece from the 2024 like that's like uh like stussy Stussy? Stussy and, and, and Supreme. Like, if you can find a classic piece from those guys, yeah. you're like, oh, damn. Like this I don't like, the, I don't like the, the the direction Supreme is going. In. I don't either. I feel like... They lost, they, lost, they lost their... Their core. Yeah. But I feel like it's just them, like, trying to stay relevant. Yeah. To an extent. Yeah. Um, fast fashion. It's yeah, that's what ass. it is. There's a fast lot of fast fashion, fashion going on right ass, now. Bro. Then you got designers. like, And then, like... Tremaine, he left, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna tear down a black man. But I don't, I'm not too fond of what he's doing right now. Got you. Um, so since you're moving over into Perico, uh, into Perico right now, uh, where do you see that going in like the next five years? Oh man, it's going. Oh man, it is going to. It's gonna. It's gonna. It's gonna fuck the internet up, bro. It's gonna. It's gonna take the the world by storm, and I think because. Now, like, I'm more conscious of my audience. Like, I'm more conscious of the people who actually show up and support. And, right. Um, honestly, bro, it's the women and the gays. Like, and and with this new brand. That's like, factual. That, like, that's all I'm making, like, pieces for. Like, I can show you, bro. Like, I can show you right now. Like, look. Like, I'm working on some hair clips. It's smart. Like, yeah. I'm like I'm I'm trying to market specifically to the bad bitches. Like, I feel that. Uh, and, and, well, and that's the thing. Like anything that women buy, men are always gonna follow. So that's actually genius of you to go that route with yeah, your marketing. For sure. But also, I, I I just said I said bad bitches because I feel like like it's some men, no like no Diddy or whatever. But it's some men that like just have like bad bitch persona. You feel me? I get you. Like, so that that's that's why I'm making clothes for men right. that are secure with with their with their self and are willing to just be themselves in their skin. And the women, like everybody, everybody that feel comfortable and confident. I'm making I'm making products for the bad bitches, bro. No, I feel that. Um, have you dealt with any adversity uh with being in the in the fashion industry as far as like Dealing with manufacturers, clients trying to do like chargebacks, things of that sort. Nah, the only the only <laughs> the only thing I had a problem. I had one problem ever in life, like one problem, bro. It was this. It was this girl in Tallahassee. She she bought a she bought a piece. She bought a she bought a brick by brick hoodie. Right. Uh, no shirt. She bought a brick by brick shirt, and you know like. She went on the website. She ordered it. I shipped it off. Boom. But when I when I shipped it, when I, when I bought the shipping label, it didn't come with a tracking number. Okay. Sometimes it do. I think it depends on how much it weighed. Like, sometimes it came with a tracking number. Sometimes it didn't. So, whatever. Like, I, I sent it off. Like, I put it in the, in the mailbox, and that's it. So, she, she DMs me, and she's like, oh, um, I didn't get a tracking number. And I'm like, okay, like, can you tell me your order number? Mm-hmm. Like, so then she tell me her order number. And I'm like, okay, boom. Like, I check, I check, I check my site. I check um, Shopify. Right. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like, there's no tracking number. Like, it, it didn't give me one. So I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry. And she's like, <laughs> maybe I'm a dick, bro. I don't know. She's like, how, how would I know that it, that it came? 
I'm like, just just check your mailbox. Right. <laughs> That's valid. Just check your mailbox, lady. And you know, she didn't like that response. Um, she called me super unprofessional. She told me she hate the little. She was a black woman, so she was like, I hate the little black businesses. And I'm like, you know, I understand. Like, I, I'm not even mad at you. Um, I'm sorry. It's, I don't know what you want me to do now. Like, it's already shipped out. You feel me? Just let right. me know if it don't come. And but we never. I talked feel about like that. I feel like we're harder on ourselves. Um, when it comes to business, yeah, than other companies, and yeah. that needs to change. Yeah. Um. I personally like to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Like I ordered something from this guy one time, and um, I got no no tracking number. Yeah. Which which is cool, but it was like months had gone by, mm. and I hadn't gotten uh the package from him. So like I messaged him, I was like, "Hey, bro, like, still haven't received anything. What's going on?" And um, he was just like unprofessional as far as like not responding in a timely manner. Mm. It's like weeks going by without getting a response. And even then, like I I tried not to like bash this man online or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Just because I don't know what your situation may be. You may be going through something with your family or yeah. something in, in that manner. Um but my thing is like you were being she said you're being unprofessional, but in reality you were being professional because you responded to her within a timely manner. Let her know like hey, yeah. it didn't come to track your number, but like I sent it out. I and saw. if you don't receive it, let me know, and I'll send you something else. Yeah, she didn't like that, though. She never shopped again. Shouts to her, though. I hope I she's doing... It'd be like that sometimes. You know, she. You know, it's funny, though, because, like, this like this particular person is somebody who, like, who always, like, revisits my life, like, and I don't know her at all. Oh, wow. Like, but she, and she doesn't know me either. Mm-hmm. But, like, I just, like, I'll have, like... Little Dylan's with, like with her or like around her, and I'm like, okay, like, oh, like I, like I met, like this is a girl that I met, um, when I was like in middle school. I'm, right. I'm, I'm ninety percent sure she don't even remember like when I, like, I actually met her, but like not too, not too long ago, one of my boys, um, he had a shorty who like graduated like fire academy, and like she was in the class, and I was like, oh, this, oh wow, uh, oh look, that's that's little shorty who never who. Maybe, maybe not. Got the brick by brick shirt. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm That's glad funny. she's doing. She's doing fine. I, I hope she is. She's a firefighter now. Like, okay. Yeah. Hope. <laughs> shout to you. Um, <laughs> outside of your own company, yeah. uh, what's three South Florida companies, uh, fashion wise, that you rock with? Um, another fell art project. Okay. Um, so that shout out to the homie. Yeah, that's that's the homie. That's that's my that's my my cousin actually, Cargo, um, who used to be Mellow Fellow, then he rebranded to Mids, and then he rebranded to Salty One Eighty Two, and I hope I hope I hope Cargo Cargo I hope you stick with another fell art project. Uh, the pieces I've seen so far are looking fire. Yeah, I are. hope he sticks with it as well. I, I still have some um. Some mid sex cell so shirts mids. as well. I'm, yeah, that was. I missed them. That the, was a really good. The first mids drop yeah. ever was like the hardest thing I've ever seen. And I couldn't get my size. Mm. So I, I bought a shirt for this shorty. And like, it's just, it's just so like disappointing because I know she like. She didn't. She didn't cherish that piece. Mm-hmm. I know she probably don't even know where that shirt is at right now. But if I had it, I'd put it in a frame. I remember the amount of attention I got off of those uh, sex, sex sell shirts, bro. Sex like, does sell, though. Yeah, but it was the <laughs> fact that it was such a good message behind it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just it sex wasn't just sales. Horny. It was actually like a, a good message behind it, and it spoke about like everything that goes on with people being like essayed and things of that sort. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was just that was a conversational piece. Anytime I wore it out, definitely had people stop me like, yo, can I see your shirt? So I'll definitely get that. That's a timeless piece, yeah, man. Yeah, for, sure. uh, for sure. What would be your next one? Um, I'm going to say I'm gonna say the boys over at Felt because of... They're killing it. Um, yeah, like, I I just, I love the success that they, they have. It's, it's honestly um, inspiring. I don't really know them that well. Right. I have a couple, I have a couple Felt pieces. Um, but I just, I like, I like... Seeing like two two niggas from the crib, like man, I was mad how how quickly those uh the MLB caps sold out. But they keep restocking the first, them. The first one that came, um yeah, but they don't. I haven't ever get my hands on the Yankees one, and yeah. you know how I am when it comes to my Yankees caps, yeah, bro. Like yeah. it's like every time they have came out, it was like 
it was in the moment where I was like, I'm not buying hats. Like I, feel, I feel, go on those on those hiatuses because I'm like I'm a I don't have an addictive personality at all. <laughs> like that's not my thing. But I love what I love. And like when I buy caps, I go crazy. Tight, Especially tight. like I'll say 2022 was probably my craziest year with buying caps. But I remember one time there was like a week where I bought like eight caps in one week. And it has to be like fifty dollars, right? Bro, I didn't <laughs> Bro, this is the thing. I was working two jobs. I was working two jobs, and um, one of them it was, was buying hats. Yeah, right? it, it was to the point where all my bills were already paid up, and, you know, and like, caps were just coming like crazy. And yeah. um, you didn't have a kid at the time, did you? No, no, I already, I already oh, had yeah, my, okay. yeah, I already had my son. Okay, okay. <laughs> and the thing is, my son's taken care of, so it's yeah, like yeah. I got extra funds, and I, I've right. been busting my ass. I'm gonna treat myself. So kids are so like, easy to take care man. of, man. And they're they're so easy, bro. They're so easy to please. Yeah, they don't need a million dollars, bro. No, nah, not at all. That's some bullshit. It's, <laughs> I just saw That's something some recently where um, where this lady was like, uh, she gets a thousand dollars a week in child support, and that's not a enough. Week. And I was like, that's fifty two thousand dollars a year, tax free. Uh, and I don't. Like, Women, if you don't go get you a fucking job, that's, bro, bro, that's like, more than that's more than the average job pays. You feel me? Because if you make fifteen dollars an hour, you're not making fifty two thousand dollars. You're a year. not, bro. So. I don't know. Like, I feel like certain people just over overplay what they want in life, and they make it seem like it's about uh, like it's about the kid. But no kid needs fifty two thousand dollars a year to be raised. Nah, like none. Even even with activities and things of that sort, that's not needed. But you know, bro, to you each their own. You can't spend a thousand dollars, bro. If you wanted to, you couldn't spend a band a week on your kid. Like, what are you gonna buy, <laughs> bro? Kids. Are, Kids' clothes are inexpensive for the most part. Like, unless you're out here buying your kid, like, designer clothing when they're in, like, preschool and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's stupid. I mean... It, it is stupid. It's stupid, yeah. I totally agree with you. It's very stupid. That's I'm dumb. not I'm not buying my child a freaking uh, fair God when they're in freaking preschool knowing yeah. that kids grow so fast. Yeah. Like... You gonna wear that for one... You... Bro, my, my, kids one thing is, my kids' thing is Crocs. And, you know, I hate Crocs, bro. Like... I love Crocs. I, I know you do. Like, <laughs> I can't stand Crocs it's because of a teacher that I had in high school that used to wear uh, navy blue Crocs. Damn. And he would take his shoes off in class and put his feet on the desk. Funky. So because of that, I just, just the thought of Crocs bothers me. But my kid loves them, so I buy them, you know? Like, and they're not expensive. They're, they're very cheap. Especially at that size. What yeah. is it, like 30, 40? Bro, 30, 30, 30 yeah. 30, 30. I spend yeah. more on, like, on, on Nikes for him, and then he's like, oh, I don't even... Daddy, I don't want to wear these. I'm like, what you want to wear? He's like, my Crocs. My Crocs. I'm like, man, go get them. Like, hey, comfy. Hey, they hey, comfy. Dude, hey. I, who am I to tell you no to what you want to wear? Like, I mean, that's what I be trying yeah. to tell. I, I be saying like, as a, as a parent, bro, like, my 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 role is to guide and protect. Like, I'm not here. Like, even though yeah, that's like I got a child. I'm not here to tell my child what to do. I'm here to guide them. Right. Help them make the right decisions and protect them for any harm, bro. No, for like, sure, for sure. But it's your life, bro. If you want to wear Crocs, I don't want hey. you to wear Crocs. I think you could put a better fit on. But hey, live your life, man. You gonna create. You gotta develop your own style. Mm -hmm. You feel me? All right. So we uh we said another field project, and we said Phil, oh yeah yeah. What's Phil. your third one? Yeah, my bad. I be going on tangents. No, you good, bro. Um, you said besides me. Yeah. Can't let you count yourself. <laughs> Can't count myself. Another fell art project. Nah, that's it, man. I, I mean, it's other brands. Other brands, they cool. They cool. But even like, even like some of my home, like, cause I have other homies that have brands, right? And like, I'm just not their target audience. That's understandable. That's real. Um, and I, and it's, it's not even talking shit, cause like. Like I got one homie, I was just on the phone with him, like on my way over here, and he has a brand and he asks me like for advice or like for opinions all the time. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, like he's like, hey, you like this design? I'd be like, yo, you know, not like I'm I'm not your your target audience. I don't feel like you should like I don't like the design. Like, but But that's real though. Yeah, like yeah. it's better for you to be honest and well we talk about other yeah. stuff like vendors and stuff like if you need like oh i'm trying to work on this i'm like oh i, I did that this who who did it for me so like that. but like as far as his like what he likes and his his audience mm -hmm. like because 
he go like he has a, he has a, a core fan base and they they all his stuff sell. Um, but yeah, so no, just another for our project. I think Cargo is a f- fucking genius. Um, I like I like felt I like the I like felt because felt give a nigga hope. Right. And other than that, it ain't it ain't really nobody else that I could even think about for real that I actually like. Damn. Oh, you know what? That do rags nigga. Okay. Do rags go crazy. I almost forgot about him. Yeah. Do rags go crazy. Yeah. All right. Do rags number three for me. For sure. For sure. For sure. That's a solid three. Um. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you about streetwear companies, but since you said you're going the luxury route, uh. No, that was the original plan, but I'm like. Now, no, it's not. It's not. It's not exactly. Cause like gotcha. I got, I got like. I got. I ordered like some blank hoodies. I ordered like five different colored blank hoodies, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm learning how to screen print because that's a great thing to learn. Honestly, um, I learned back yeah. in like 2014. You know, how to, you know how to screen print? Yeah. Um, one yeah. of my homies used to work at a screen print shop down here. Right, right. Uh, not that far from here, actually, like a couple blocks over. Tight shit. And um, I would go hang out with him certain nights, and he taught me how to screen print because he'll be in there like doing the shirts for certain events and stuff like that, yeah. and just kicking it with him. I learned how to do it. Yeah, it's not yeah. it's not hard. It's not hard. I just I'm getting I'm gathering all the the right pieces and shit. Right. But but and it's not even on some um to cut costs, you know. Like it's not even that. It's really because I want to. I want what is what is what is next project that I'm working on. I want to be able to have like customer customization available. Like if that makes sense, I'm trying to get my words together. Like I don't want to have to you order fifty to hoodies. Things yeah, I don't want to have to own. order fifty black hoodies with a white logo. Like I want you to be able to say, "Hey, yo, like, I got these shoes. Like oh, I got this idea for a fit." And I'd be like, all right, cool, like come come by the crib and we're like we're gonna we're gonna get you a hoodie. And then okay, look, these are the paint options that I have, and we're gonna get you a bright rate, we're gonna get you something for you, you know? That's clean. Yeah, but not and everybody can, could do that. And you can definitely members only uh, you can definitely get you a nice little fee with yeah. doing it that way. Nah, for sure, for sure. That's that's basically that's uh that's what Iceberg and Coogee were doing when they first came out. Ooh. Yeah, if you think about it, everything was a one of one. Wait, wait, listen, man. When Iceberg and Coogee did whatever they did, <laughs> you have to understand well, how old I was. I uh, know, I, I get that. <laughs> I, so I don't I even get know that what you're completely. talking about. Coogee's before my time. Yeah. And uh, I, I bought a couple Coogee pieces. And I had a couple Coogee bro, pieces. $600. And people much. looked at me like they're cra- like you're very crazy for spending that, but I don't mind spending it because that piece is gonna last you a lifetime. You said iceberg, like the iceberg, like the brand. Like I don't, I don't know if you remember back in the days, um, they had what you call it. They had iceberg had like the Looney Tunes pieces. Iceberg uh, is not the rapper. No, not iceberg, the rapper. Ice, okay. Iceberg, uh, the, brand. the clothing brand. Never heard yeah. of it. So, um, this is like early two thousands. They were really big. Like if you. Go look at like throwback Lil Wayne, like pictures from like, so, like early Cash like, Money days. Yeah, you was you was a little one preschool yeah, kindergarten. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I had they were shit though. I they were making that. like custom pieces, and then they started making uh, stuff for like the Looney Tunes. That's right. And then um, Lot Twenty Nine is kind of like which you might know is uh, is a little bit after Iceberg, and they started doing like something mm-hmm. similar. But I Iceberg was like, research. bro, Iceberg was known. If if you listen to like um. Uh, if you listen to like mystical uh, shake your ass, he says, <laughs> <laughs> "Sorry to to mention him knowing what, what he does and stuff." What he's like, bro, he, he has like three different rape charges. Yeah, that's he. Yeah, uh, he's damn man. It's it's wild, but um, <laughs> he's like, you go, uh, you go, you go, you go, pay for it, bro. Before before taking it, that's you crazy. You pay like <laughs> don't forty dollars, fifty dollars, bro. Man. You get a QV, bro. <laughs> He List like, crawlers, man. Uh, like, he said something about like buying icebergs if you uh, if you have the right curves. Yeah. And then um, genuine in those jeans mentioned iceberg as uh, well. I gotta do some research yeah. on iceberg. Um, currency still wears them a lot. He uh, he has a few songs where he talks about like wearing uh, iceberg history sweats and stuff like that. Word. Yeah, they they were pretty expensive pieces back then. Word. Um, that's why I mentioned them because they did the, the they did the one on ones originally. Yeah. Uh, you know who was big on Iceberg? Jay Z. At one point, he was calling himself Iceberg Slim, because no Biggie was wearing Coogee and Jay Z was wearing Iceberg. That was like a real big thing for them. But um, 
Yeah, I'm saying, like, who would you say uh, is your biggest influence as far as, like, the luxury side of things? Uh, like what brand? Yeah. I know you mentioned, uh, I know you mentioned Polo, Polo Black, which is Polo. very Polo purple Rock label. Orange. Purple label. Purple, was, yeah. Uh, bro, purple label, I, um, I remember when it first, like, really blew up was around, like, my, my junior, senior year in high school. And everybody thought they had purple label. And it was like, bro, that's blue label. That's not purple label. Uh, you you can't afford purple label yeah. on a high school budget unless yeah. you have a family that's up there like that. But it was cool because like songs like uh like Swag Surf came out and they were mentioning it. Um Ain't I Tip mentioned Ralph Lauren Purple Label. Yeah, yeah. So like a lot well, of Milena, people were Milena folks. Yeah. Milena. But the first person I ever heard mentioned it was Hove. Word. Yeah, on um on change clothes. Yeah, I think but I, I think to answer your question, it is it is polo, like Without that, because it's one of them. It's one of them brands. I feel like that's gonna forever make timeless pieces. It's like I agree on that. Other other brands have their moments. You feel me? Like right now, who have who have a big moment? Like Chrome Hearts. Um, and don't get me wrong, Chrome Hearts has been out for years, right. and they have a core fan base. It's like bikers and shit. But now, like rappers, Javante Davis had a Chrome Heart in his last. Yeah, that fight. was wild in his last fight. That shit was hard. It though. was hard, that but shit it was, was like, hard. No, that shit. But it's like like knowing like knowing the brand. What the fuck is going on? Like, right. how, like how did how did we get here? But I feel like. Um, yeah, Polo is definitely um, one of those one of those brands that like you can't you can't go wrong. Like you know, in no earlier year. this year, um, I was like, damn, like is is Ralph not getting the same love until when the uh, Ain't I Fresh dude mm-hmm. came out? He hit on the Ralph shirt, yeah, and I was like, bro, Unk fresh as fuck. What yeah, you mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Ain't I Fresh? He was fresh, yeah, bro. bro. Like you Unk can, was fresh. Can, to me, you can never go wrong with a Ralph you Lauren Polo. You can't. You can't shit on. You can't shit on Ralph Lauren, bro. You can't shit on. Ralph Lauren Tech, you feel me? I'll take I'll take I'll take a Ralph Lauren Tech over a Nike Tech any day. I agree completely. I'm taking that, bro. I agree completely. Nice little polo tee, nice little polo polo shirt. Bro, I remember like, uh, being in college and spending all my checks. These pants are polo. I spend all my checks on Ralph Lauren, bro. Yeah, got to. And shout out to my parents for not like tripping on me, uh, like like most parents, as far as like, oh, you're spending all your money, da da da. My bro, I remember uh, buying like six hundred dollars worth of Ralph Lauren drawers. Jesus Christ, bro! <laughs> and, underwear, bro. Bro, but Just to put on your ass, bro. That's that's the thing though. Like I said, I one thing about me, I don't mind paying for quality. Ah, six six hundred dollars worth of underwear. How many? How many? How many that's, boxers? That's did a you lot get? of pairs. Okay, you yeah, got a lot. Uh, three pack of the boxer briefs are like thirty eight dollars. Okay, okay. Well, I don't know what it is now. That's what it was at that's that time. That's what it was back then. Yeah, it's probably like fifty dollars now. Bro. Probably like, so. Yeah, I wouldn't even be surprised. Sixty dollars, um, bro. Shit, so the, fucking expensive, man. The socks was like, you get a six pack for like twenty dollars, so it wasn't it wasn't bad, bro. Like I always got my polo sh- like s- socks and underwear from like Marshalls. That was smart. You get it for like twenty dollars instead yeah. of thirty eight. Marshall's. Yeah, yeah, I used to work at TJ Maxx at one point. I um, mm-hmm. I had a homie that worked in the stock room, Ooh. and he would call me like, "Don't even put that. it on the floor." Yeah, I used to tell him, "Bro, don't, don't just even, put those to the don't side. Even put that on the floor." Especially on weeks when we got like, so the, this kind of at Marshall's and TJ Maxx was ass. It was like ten percent. Yeah, but like every couple of every couple of months they'll give us like twenty percent for the weekend, nah. and I'm like, "Bro, I'm oh. putting all the shit on layaway until twenty percent. The week of twenty percent, I'm pulling it out and I'm buying it all, and I'll buy like fuck, fucking like ten packs of white tees at that moment." And yeah, that that was definitely helpful. Um, polo T-shirt, polo draws, and this is like right before Wayne came out with single saying that. <laughs> I remember once Wayne came out, everybody was in there trying to buy everything. Like, bro, yeah. like y'all not gonna find it. Like, it's <laughs> not here. It next to the floor. <laughs> it's not here. Like, it's not. Yeah, it's like, not coming out. You're not gonna you find gotta it. know a guy, and I'm the guy, and you don't know me, so you're not gonna get it. And Dro was definitely a big influence on me around that time too. So like, I was buying. I remember having like lamb's wool sweaters from Ralph Lauren. I remember. My pops, may he rest in peace, one time um, washing clothes. He picked up one of my lambswool sweaters and washed it, and it shrunk. And, bro, it shrunk to the point where Tiny <laughs> could, could fit it. And this is when she's in elementary school. And, I'm, bro, I'm hot because yeah. I just paid, like, $80 for this fucking sweater. Yeah. And I can't wear it no more. You like Bro, that, yeah, I was, I was big mad. Damn. I would have been. I would have been. Nah, I, <laughs> I, at that time, I would have been mad. But, like, yeah. that happened right now today. No, now I wouldn't care. I'm I'm a lot older now, but as a 19 year old, spending eighty dollars when you're making like eight twenty something an hour. Fuck yeah, yeah. that's 
Uh, that was that was tough. Minimum wage was crazy it was back crazy, in the day. I was just telling somebody the other day, um, uh, a barista. I was like, bro, like y'all really complain entirely too much. I said, my baristas who was making nine fourteen when I started at Starbucks do way more than what y'all do, and I I never had to beg them to do anything, bro. I was like, now you guys are making over sixteen an hour, which I still don't think y'all make enough, but like the I way the Starbucks playing. Make- Bro, they're starting at 16, yeah. Okay, okay. It's crazy. Remember when I started, it was like 9, 14. I remember seeing my first Starbucks check um, and getting the vending check that same day. And the Starbucks check was for like 64 hours. And it was like eight and change after taxes and everything. And then I had a vending check for one game. And it was like $1,500. And I was like, man, fuck this insurance. <laughs> but I was like, you know what, though? I'm like. I Because oh, you was doing the beer thing, right? Yeah. I was, yeah. bro, like, th- those checks was different. You feel me? Like, I made 70K at 24. Off of off of selling beer and then going to uh, at twenty six going to a job where I don't think I made thirty thousand that year and I was like damn bro like this shit's not the same yeah but yeah it was ass corporate greed is ass bro. yeah corporate greed is definitely crazy nice nice um, but you know you, you do what do you got to do money. what you gonna do with all that money <laughs> what are you gonna do with it bro I mean but that's why it's give it to us I can get that's, fresh that's why you gotta like you gotta have a plan a game plan of what you wanna do in life. Uh, if you're stuck on just thinking, oh, I'm working for a paycheck, then you're already losing the life because a job is only supposed to keep you just above broke. So they just they pay you just enough money to yeah. get your dumb ass to come back the next day. <laughs> just enough. I did not. I like, don't think you're gonna stack up and never have to do that again. I guess Man. when you retire, that's after 35 years or some shit. That's insane to think you got to work for 35 years to retire. Yeah. Um, I don't, yes. I don't know. Like, it's crazy. I'm glad that I did what I did at a younger age. I was able to travel and Live. see the world before for sure. settling down and saying, okay, I'm working, doing this. Because I feel like if you don't have children, you're under 25, you should be able to go travel as much as you want to. Facts. Um, especially, like, I feel like in the minority community, yeah. it doesn't happen enough. Yeah. Like, I know a bunch of white kids that, like, fresh out of college or fresh out of high school, they're like, oh, I'm going to Europe. For like, a year. Bro, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, that's a, that's a dope experience um, for you to go to Europe. Uh, especially, like, with us who enjoy fashion, that's a trip that's definitely something that would be dope for us because, like, Italy's known for fashion. France is known for fashion. I'd be, so, be seeing TikToks of, like, Italians and they, like, they're like, you're not Italian. Look at the way you dress it. Like, <laughs> they so snobby. I love them, bro. I want to go. I want to go to Italy. I think it'll be a good move, especially with with the field that you're in. Like, that's. I feel like we uh we as Americans we don't we know about fashion, but we don't see as much as they do because they see certain pieces years before it comes to the side of town. Damn. Um. That's an interesting take. How do you feel about uh? All of the, all of the black creatives getting into high end fashion now, like Virgil, may he rest in peace. The um, Pharrell, Tyler the Creator, you mentioned Tyler earlier, like Tyler the Creator doing what he's doing over at Louis Vuitton. Uh, what's your it. take on that? I, my take on it is that the, that the guy who I feel deserves that, um. They they shitted on him. They shitted on Kanye. I agree. They shitted on Kanye. Like Kanye Kanye had a fucking Louis Vuitton collab back early. Back in like that 2006, was 2000, I think. 2007, 2008, the Jaspers. Yeah. Yeah. The patchworks, like. Yeah, it was the that Dons, was some fire sneakers. Like, the Dons. That was some great sneakers, man. Like, and they 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 shitted on him. They called him crazy. And and you know, R.I.P. Virgil, man, he, he wasn't that creative. Yeah, a lot of his pieces weren't amazing. Trash. I um I liked some of the sneakers that he came out with, uh, with Nike. There was a few where I was like, okay, this is fire. And there's ones where I was like, bro, I'm not. I would never wear those. But you know, like, like I like what I like. I'm I'm more into like classic Nikes and things of that sort. So some of that shit was a little too wild from for my liking. I seen Virgil Wright chair on a chair. I mean, what? that was hilarious to me. <laughs> like, was he trolling? I'm, I I kind of feel like he was he had same to thing be. same thing with Kanye. I remember um working the St. Pablo tour yeah. and uh 
watching all these kids stand in line for two hours to buy merchandise before the show even uh, started, like, actually, before they actually opened the doors for yeah. you to go to your seats. Yeah. And I remember seeing, like, a Gildan T-shirt for $70. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bro, Kanye, you know what you're doing. There's no way in hell you should be selling the Gildan T-shirt for $70. But you know the audience that's purchasing it. They gonna buy so it. I'm not mad at you. But that's, it's very interesting um, because... I I don't know what he was going through then, mm-hmm. um, or like if he even had control of it because I I heard in an interview where he, or like people mentioned his, his outrageous prices and he was saying like yeah, I don't control prices like I'm not they don't give me the opportunity right because like right now like everything on his website is fucking twenty dollars bro. Well, I also think that that was genius of him because him putting everything at the same price. He gets to see what sells the most. Yep. So when he does bring out his next uh, his next collection, he knows what to focus. He on. knows what to put at the highest price points, what to keep at a lower price point. Like those, bro. I've seen so many people with the wet tank tops, wet tank and I was like, that was genius. All you did was slap a word across the across the fucking white beater, and you put it on the website for twenty dollars, and they sold out. It was like that was yeah. smart of you, mm-hmm. and now you know just do the same thing again, a different word or a different colorway. And it's still gonna sell. What t- they had, a, they had a moment. I think the moment over for them now, but the, them, them t shirts had a moment. Yeah. They had a big moment, bro. Like right now, like like when they like when it dropped, I didn't have like I didn't have nobody to buy it for. But now I feel like you know, like and I can't. Like, it's, the moment's over. Yeah. And, like, it's, you missed I mean, it. He was smart though. He spent yeah, the money. Yeah, he's not. I got some pods. I got some easy pods. That's what's up. I do. I had one. To, I had one to school one day, and the kids, the kids, the kids, they like, they like that, you know. How how do you like working with the kids? That's another thing. Love it. Love it. That's love another it. part of your life. Like I'm, I'm proud of you because I feel like it's it's dope to see you working with children, and knowing that you actually care. Yeah. And I especially like you know me, bro. I'm big on community and giving back to kids. Toy drives, backpack drives, things of that sort. We're actually working on a backpack drive right now. Um, fire, fire. I'm affiliated with the information like for going sure. forward. For sure, uh, for sure. Probably closer to like the middle of, of July. But um, I feel like having people that are like from the culture and young enough to still understand these kids does make a difference. Because I remember being in middle school, which what? was um, when I first got down here. And um, when, I, like, when I first moved down south and stuff. And I remember... Uh, I had one teacher who was like pro student, mm-hmm. and then I had other students that like didn't give a fuck about the students, and um, it showed. And this one teacher, she would always tell us like these teachers talk about y'all like y'all are animals. They do, and they do. Yeah, it's crazy. They, right now today, they like they just don't understand, bro, because they wasn't like. I know you was a little badass kid. I know you was. Bruh. I was. You feel me? And it wasn't even bad because, like, you want to be destructive. He's like, you a kid. You just having yeah, fun, bro. Like, bro, you just trying to have some fun, bro. My biggest thing in school was I was always I was always smart. I always had honors classes and things of that sort. Yeah. But I'm going to get into some bullshit. Got to. Because. Keep, keep the day going. Yeah, like. Keep the blood flowing. It made shit fun. Make shit exciting. Um, Y'all not giving me anything new to learn in reality. I'm never gonna use this shit. Yeah, like, bro, I remember uh, me and my me and my mom had a conversation uh, a couple years ago, and I told her I was like, bro, I hated high school. The only reason I went to that shit was because it had girls. And I remember something. I was like, if you at one point she was thinking about putting me in, like Columbus, Damn. and I was like, if you put me in Columbus, I'm dropping out. I was like, the, women the only reason I go to school the is because there's women. The women. So like, that's why I said like you, you play sports. With the kids. I played uh, football in ninth grade. And then I got into some into some bullshit. Yeah. Uh, my coach wanted me to come back tenth grade, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm making money. I'm, I'm cool. Yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> nah, Basically, I, yeah. So I I was just seeing uh, that they're thinking about doing like nil deals for high school now. That's and I was crazy. like, man, if that was a thing when I was in school, I'd stay playing football. But Th- that nil thing is is such a scary realm because it's so new. Um, but it like I don't I don't I don't think it's good. To what to what extent? Because these kids are signing these kids are signing contracts before they have reached their like put, before they have any any bargaining power, you know. And the contracts mm-hmm. the contracts could be lifelong contracts, or the contracts could go. Well, uh, that's that's why too. they're supposed to. Even so, like so, 
if you're signing any contract, you gotta make sure it doesn't have words like perpetuity, perpetuity in it, because that's for life. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, that means that's that's for life. So if you sign perpetuity. a contract with perpetuity, you could die tomorrow and that you're still signing that contract. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of rappers that sign deals like that. <laughs> that's why I say stuff like that. But yeah. um, but like but like kids don't know that. Yeah, I, but I feel like uh, it's it's on the parents and the parents don't know the people, that. It's on the parents and people around them know that like you shouldn't have your child sign the contract without an attorney anyway. Yeah. Um, I feel like NIL could be a good thing, uh, especially for like college students. Yeah. Because, bro, I remember having homeboys that played college football mm-hmm. that were broke as fuck mm-hmm. and couldn't afford to eat a fucking slice of pizza. Yeah. And you're work you're playing football for a million dollar, for a multi million dollar for fucking organization. college. Yeah. So, um. I feel like it it has its good things and it has its flaws as well. Like you said, if you don't know what you're signing, you're you could be signing a terrible deal and you're stuck in a deal for life. Yep. But um, if you have the right people around you, you're signing a deal that's giving you some type of like uh, funding in that moment to keep you going. Then it's a good thing. It is. I th- I think. I I think to 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 make things get not that wicked. Right. To not give them that much, it shouldn't be. No, especially in high school, it shouldn't be that much. In college um, too, because it's like if, I think um, who was it? I think it was Ti 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 was thinking about signing Twenty One Savage at one point. And I I could have these artists confused, but um, the artist wanted like a million dollars, and then the yes, the I heard person, the conversation where uh, yeah. Ti was like, "Bro, for what it would take for me to sign you for a million dollars, it's not even worth a million dollars." Like, that's that's actually genuine conversation yes. for someone to tell you that. Yeah. Um, it was Ti and Twenty One, right? Yeah, Ti and Twenty One okay, Savage. Yeah. yeah, that was that was a genuine. That was genuinely for him to say that to him made a lot of sense because there's people that uh that have signed deals that they shouldn't have signed. Yeah. Me doing music, I've been around long enough where I've been offered certain things, and I'm like, bro, that's not something that even makes sense to me. Yeah. I got offered a deal when I was 18 that's for fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and I'm glad that I didn't sign it. Yeah. I'm not gonna say who it was with, but I'm I'm glad that I didn't sign that because that company's not even doing well right now. Like, uh, they're like belly up. <laughs> probably some bullshit. Yeah, man. bro, fifty thousand dollars is not worth you signing something that uh, takes away your creative rights. Mm-hmm. Um, I was gonna ask you because I know you used to do music, and uh, you had the rocket room and things of that sort. Have you ever thought about doing a project with artists, yeah. kind of like how uh, Ten Deep? Did with Wale back in the days, yeah, and things of that sort. But my project is gonna be dangerous, bro. But I think I'm gonna do it, cause it's like, I'm like, I know a lot of I know a lot of niggas that rap, right? And you feel me? Miami is is a every 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 urban community is is I think have like the same kind of shit going on where it's like. Mm-hmm. Like these people don't fuck with these people. These people don't fuck with these people. But like, I'm not. I'm. I'm not in the field. Like, I'm not going on drills and shit. So like, right. I got homies in, in every little hood. You mm-hmm. feel me? So I I fuck with rappers in every little hood. Like, and I'm from where I'm from, and right. I never, I never turn my back on the heights. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I, I was thinking about doing the, like doing like a down south project. I mean, you I think me? like, I think that'd be good. All honestly. the hoods, like, you feel me? I, bro, I see a lot of these young dudes like beefing, and it doesn't make sense to me because like they so talented, bro. bro. They get together, they get some money, bro. I've I've lived in Perrine. I guess because I lived all over Dade County. I lived in Perrine. Mm-hmm. I lived in the Heights. I lived up north in the city. Yeah, like I've lived in the Ranger. Mm-hmm. I've lived in Cutler Bay, mm-hmm. uh, South Miami Heights. Mm-hmm. So like I don't see the point of y'all beefing on these small ass blocks. And that's coming from a dude that's a gang member, like. <laughs> so, but it's like I'm saying this as someone who's who's age to the point where I see us doing better for ourselves than just like the the day by day bullshit, like. Bro, if you, bro, if you, it don't matter. Pick a hood, pick a beef, and if, when you trace it back to the source, it's gonna be about a bitch. Always. Always, and that's not even just that's not even just on like. On some black shit, that's on uh, like that's on wars, bro. No, if you go back to uh, World War One and World War Two, it was over women. Battle. Um, that's just that's just men in history. Men are stupid <laughs> in reality. Hey, uh, Stop being so tender, man. Man, stop being so tender. It man. really be like that. Uh, 
I don't know. Like it's, I would like to see a lot of these young artists uh, mesh together and do something. Me too. Because I remember uh, I back in like you. back in like 2013. I'm thinking about being a mesher, bro. Bro, think about it's kind of da- it's kind of dangerous though, because they. Cause I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about it. Cause I might, I might have niggas from different hoods on the same song, and they and won't that, know until it fucking drop. Oh well. Honestly, that'll work well. Think, of, <laughs> think about Wu Tang Clan, bro. Yeah. Raekwon and and Ghostface used to shoot at each other. I didn't know that. Yeah, they were, bro. Like, I'm talking about big guns shooting at each other. And they used the to best be the, friends in the studio together. No, they. Uh, so what uh, Rizzy used to do was he would record everybody separately. Mm-hmm. Unless you got, if y'all got along, you record together. But until he got everybody to be on the same page, yeah, that's when they started recording together. Before that, he used to record everybody separately yeah, that's because good. niggas was really beefing and shooting at each other because they were from different projects. Yeah. So I can see you making that happen. Um, it's just having the engineer that's willing to deal with that. You feel me? Because a lot of engineers record everybody separately. People. Yeah. Record them separately. Yeah, record, I ain't gonna tell them. Hey, these people don't like on the same other. beat and then just. And do like Metro Boomin does and just uh, mesh every song together. Yeah. Like piece it piece it together. Mm-hmm. That's definitely possible. Um, I remember back in like 2013, um, Miami was really in like a like a new Renaissance type feel. Um, and it was artists from all over the city working together. And you yeah. can go to like Wynwood or Coconut Grove and places like this. Reddit and, was popping. Exactly. Yeah. Um. I Good remember time. meeting my first time meeting Denzel was in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't even meet Denzel through a Miami nigga. I met Denzel through Curtis Williams from Two Nine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, it was really everybody was outside moving around. Yeah. It was and, a good um, time for me. If you were outside, then you were known. It it wasn't anyone really like there was there was dumb shit going on. You I know remember, illusion. Um, yeah, I know illusion. That's my Illusions boy. That's my first boy. time I met illusion was actually um. So I knew who he was, but the first time I met him was back when I was working at Dixie Bell still. He um right. he had came in there one night and he um he had ordered like banana bread or something. Yeah. And I was like, yo, you illusion, right? <laughs> He's like, yeah, what's up? And we started having a conversation. I met and, Illusion playing pickleball, bro. I didn't even know oh, he was wow. a spectacular, bro. <laughs> like, that's the homie. <laughs> yo, I just found about pickleball recently. Um Marley was in uh I'm gonna say somewhere in Broward. Yeah. And uh they were up there playing. Yeah. And bro was like, yo, you ever heard of pickleball? And I was like, no, what the fuck is that? And he was like breaking it down to me. He um, you know how my brother gets. He's like super excited super when excited. he learns something new. He was like dumb excited about pickleball. And it uh it was like his thing that he uh that he was like fixated on at the moment. Um, pickleball. Nah, pickleball is fun. It's fun because it's a sport that doesn't require um skill. <laughs> damn, who was it that you said? You just got damn play. Damn, I'm trying to think. I was watching an interview you don't recently. Even, you don't even have to hit that bitch. You you shouldn't hit that bitch hard. No? Nah. You got to just let that bitch tap, tap. That shit cool. So, the is, cool, is it closer to tennis or closer to, like, badminton? I don't know. I never played badminton. It's, but it's like it's like table it's like, it's like table tennis. It's like full-size table tennis. That makes sense? Yeah. I forgot who it was, but I was watching an interview recently, and they mentioned yeah. pickleball. It's like full-size and, um, table tennis. Oh, I know what it was. I was watching uh, Kill Tony, oh, and uh, Cam Patterson was yeah. like, yeah, I call that stupid-ass tennis. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, white people created that because y'all can play tennis. And yeah. I was like, damn, like he was roasting that nah, shit. Nah, nah, but that's, that's like factual, though. Yeah. Like, it's like, you, like it this requires no where. skills, bro. Damn. Like this, The courts are smaller, and the ball is like light, and you don't hit it. Like you don't, I could buy a pickleball, yeah. Like I might hit it out of bounds, bro. You gotta just like it. <laughs> Damn. Like, okay. Cool. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to try it one day. I remember playing tennis with the shorty back in the days, and I, um, my issue with tennis was, I used to play baseball when I was like a kid and shit. Yeah. So yeah. like, I see a ball and I want to whack the fuck out of it. Yeah. And you can't do that in tennis. You gotta actually have control on when you hit and things of that sort. So that's basically what you're saying with pickleball. Pickleball easy. Yeah. I'm gonna have to give it a try. You got to. Um, it's like, look, there's like there's like there's course there's like it's it's, it's 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 gaining traction. They sell pickleball shit in Target and Walmart now. Oh wow! And then they got like it's some shit in Winwood that like you you can rent out like little courts and shit. They got they got drinks and shit. Like it's a little vibe. One of my boys, my that boy Prince like Matt, good, he was telling me um, about that shit. That sounds like a good uh like building activity for a team. 
Team bonding. Yeah, team bonding. Yeah. Um, what you call it? Do you ever see yourself open like a storefront? Yeah, I want to. Definitely want to. But like, but when I like, I'm I'm kind of, I'm 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 being real intentional with this new project mm -hmm. to the point where like. I want to open the store, but it's but it's gonna be like like kind of like gallery in a sense, where like well, how gallery was like a couple years ago, like right. a year ago, to where like you needed an appointment to come. Like that's fire. That's how show. um like, eight and nine was like that. Mm -hmm. Eight and nine when they first opened their store in Miami, you had to have an appointment to go shop. Yeah, and like you got um, membership. You gotta be a member. This is this is members only. Bro. That's fire. This is not it's so not for everybody. When I was younger, I wanted to open a I wanted to open a clothing store. Yeah, and um. I still might do it at some point. I just got so much, so much different projects that I'm working on. Like, facts, facts, I, um, I'm honing back in on music finally. Like, I took time off after uh, becoming a father, and I, um, like the project that I have currently, uh, I'm planning to drop it later this year on Even, and I feel like it's some of the best music that I've made that I've made in um in my lifetime because I took the time to focus on speaking on like, uh, like emotional problems that I went through, mm -hmm. things of that sort. That's and real. um, that's real from the heart. Yeah, like that was my thing. And um, yeah. my thing with wanting to open a clothing company back in the days, well, even a, even like a store was, I wanted to have that Louis Vuitton feel where you walk in, and uh, people are offering you like a split of champagne, mm -hmm. and making you feel like. You ever walked into the bank and they call you by your name? My first name. By by your last name. No. So I remember uh. That Wells Fargo over in Pinecrest. Yeah, I remember walking into there. Um, back when I back when we were working together. Yeah, I must not be getting enough money, man. <laughs> Fuck, damn, no. And that's the thing. Like, I always used to say, like, damn, imagine I'm only a couple thousands up, and y'all are calling me my last name, walking into the bank, being greeted by every single person. Um, that's how the way that made me feel is how I want people to feel when they shop with me. Yeah. I want, I want you to be greeted by your by your last name. Hello, Mr. So-and-so. Hello, Mrs. So-and-so. I want you to be offered a glass of champagne when you walk in the door. Get you a nice little uh, rosé or brute champagne. Yeah. Uh, have you sit down, pick out what you want. Mm -hmm. You're able to try it on. Yeah. And uh, if you want to get a tailor, it can be tailored in that mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. Things of that sort. So, yeah. like, that's always been my thing. I know, like, if I ever do it, I have to do it correctly. Um, and I have to know that it's fitting the feel that I would want. For myself, like facts, I know. Like, I want to. You ever been to? Um, there's a company right now that's making suits that's pretty good. They're called Indochino. Um, they're located in Brickell City Center. Okay. And uh, you walk in for a fitting, and they're building your suit from scratch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want that, but like on. They some, had a store like that in the falls. Yeah, they used like, to right next to well. the uh, American Girl dollar store. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bro, American Girl. I remember uh, when they didn't have this store, and you had to buy the the dolls out of the book. And my sister had one when she was in like second grade. Yeah. And people would come over to the house and be like, "Y'all spent how much for that doll?" Yeah. And then they opened a store and it was like, uh, they had like the salon and all that shit. Yeah. That's crazy. It is. Um, but yeah, I I wanted to be like some street like some streetwear shit. Yeah. But you're still getting that designer feel where yeah. you're walking in and things are being designed for you. On like you said, like that's what yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. For my garage. I feel like I feel like like for real. Pull up. Blow I feel like you're one. gonna. I feel like you're gonna. You're gonna succeed with that. Uh, with that style because you're making your customer feel like luxury, like uh, like they matter more than anything. They do, and that's really a great place to go with it. Um, there's not many brands doing that. Nah, I'm trying to. I'm. I'm. I'm more. I'm more focused on making human genuine connections than a sale, because. Money yeah, that's cool. more direct to consumer. A lot of yeah, and I feel like, but I feel like you already doing that kind of with uh, dark with life. dark life. Not really, because I, I even like most most people. Like even if you stayed in Miami, for most people, like I'm shipping it. I'm shipping it because like at that time I had two jobs, and I was so, a full time student. Right. Like I'm like yo, like I promise you, I know like. You the homie, but like you will get the you will get the sweatsuit way quicker if you let me put it in the mail. I promise mm -hmm. you. I promise you. Now I feel about like when I say I feel like you're already doing the the direct to consumer route. Like you had people where if you were tapped in, you could get 
like the jersey with your name oh, on yeah, it yeah, and yeah, things yeah. of that sort. That yeah. so you already had the direct the direct to consumer mind frame um from it's, back then. Was, that that jersey drop was insane because like I I only a couple people and I didn't even I didn't even get the jersey with my name on the back. Nah. Nah. Like so like a couple people like had it. Um but it was people it was people that never bought anything. Mm. And they just they felt offended because just because they knew me that they didn't get the opportunity to have a jersey with their name on. I'm like, why would you get this opportunity? But it's like it's like that at times. Like you're always gonna have people that feel entitled. Yeah. And crazy. Honestly, your biggest supporters are usually people that you don't know. So hundred percent. So it's okay for them to feel some type of way. Like you just gotta let them be what they are in that moment. Um. Some of my biggest people, like biggest fans when it comes to music, are people I never met. That's amazing. I know a chick that lives in Tampa that um wrote me like the longest DM ever a couple of years ago, telling me how my music helped her. Fire. Um, going through the stuff that she was going through, and Fire. I was like, damn, like I've never met this person in my life. Fire. And I touched them, and I didn't even know. So yeah, it's definitely people that you don't know that's gonna support you the most. For sure. So like, don't even like when that type of stuff happens, bro. It's water off your back. Just let that shit roll off and keep yeah, it moving. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, you ain't never buy nothing. Like, that's it. Like, what are we talking about? Like, you not a member? No, I feel that. What are we talking <laughs> about? Um, shit. So we spoke about music. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you see Kendrick Lamar show? No, I didn't. No. I didn't. But like, just just to be a hundred percent like fair, like Kendrick Lamar t- for me, he's mm-hmm. one of those artists that like, do I think he's a good artist? Do I think he's one of the greats? Yes. Am I a personal fan? Do I li- do I listen to 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 Pimp a Butterfly? Do I listen to Mr. Morale? I didn't even know about Mr. Morale until this beef shit happened. Bro. So Mr. Morale, I wasn't really a fan. Like I've been a Kendrick fan since I was in high school, yeah. back when he was K Dot. Yeah. Um, Mr. Morale, I really, I still don't connect to that album. Um, and it's okay. Like, I, I felt the same way about J. Cole's, uh, For Your Eyes when it came out. Yeah. Bro, I did not connect with that album at all. I was like, Cole, what is this bullshit? Oh, this and is- now as a dad, I kind of understand that album more. Mm-hmm. So, like, I get that completely. Um, you know, me, uh, for me, it was the fact of it was such a West Coast set, bro. Bro, I was in the house doing Crip Cardio. <laughs> uh, um, there was a big moment. They even brought out Tommy the Clown, which is amazing. Yes, for sure. Like, there's people that I was shocked. There's people that don't know who Tommy the Clown is. And I was like, bro, y'all never niggas, seen Rise? Niggas, yeah, niggas no. never seen Rise. I was what? telling him about my homie I go to the gym with. And, like, he, like he, he's a Drake stan, but he, like, he loves this Kendrick Lamar shit. Mm-hmm. Like, he, and he, like he, he loved it. And I was telling him about Tommy the Clown. I was like, but he never seen the movie Rise. Mm-hmm. But it was like, I only seen it because. My uncle, right? You feel me? Like he was, he was. I think he might be like a little older than you, but he, he, he had the movie that, and that's how I mm-hmm. see it. So if you didn't have like that older I feel, figure, bro, like, I feel like people need to see that movie. Um, T flies in that movie, the R and B singer. Yeah, he's in that movie, Crumpin. Damn. Yeah. What was his name? I don't remember what his name was, but T flies also in, um Stomp the Yard. Not stomp, yeah, stomp the yard with Chris Brown. Yeah, the dancing scene. Yeah, yeah. If you go back and watch that shit, T Flag got on this big ass hat. <laughs> he got like a size eight and a half fitted cap with his little ass head, and he looks yeah. like um me and him actually have like had conversations about this on Twitter, like jokingly and shit. I told him he looks like the um that Ellen DeGeneres meme yeah. <laughs> where dude run out the big ass hat on. Yeah. He's like, yeah, they did the look foul on that one. I'm like, yeah, they definitely <laughs> did you foul, bro. So that hat was way too damn big for your head. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, amazing. he. He um he was a, he was a dancing nigga he uh he was like crumping and shit like that and he's in that movie that so I didn't see that movie since I was in kindergarten so but if I remember correctly it was the Crips versus the Clowns no it was um the Crumpers Crumpers versus the Clowns Crumpers versus the Clowns yeah because because ah, okay. crumping is one style and clowning is a different style okay, okay. so like um but then but then Tommy the Clown invent crumping well he he invented clowning and crumping was um an offshoot from people that we used to mm-hmm. dance with Tommy okay, okay. so. It's kind of like, um, say you you came out with a style of um, designing, mm-hmm. and then the next person who came, Stussy and, and Supreme is a perfect example. Yeah, the dude from Supreme was under Stussy, yeah. and they came out with his own thing. Just yeah, like, it's yeah. it's just an offshoot. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so I felt like Tom and the Clown getting that moment was a good look. Um, DJ Head having his own set was amazing to me because I'm a big DJ Head fan. Mm-hmm. Um, and he really, he really stamped that West Coast shit. He brought out fucking uh, Bino, and I'm glad to see Bino getting love since Nips passed. Mm-hmm. Um, he brought out, like, he brought out fucking uh, Problem. You know, I don't know if you know Problem changed his name to Jason Martin. Mm-mm. Um, he rebranded himself and um Bro's been putting out amazing music. Him and DJ Quick just did a whole project together. I'm not I'm not too familiar with, with, with the with the color. That's the nigga culture. that um he had did the how you do that, uh like the newer version of it with Master P uh back in like this is like 2013, 2014. Mm-hmm. And um it was like his biggest song at the time. He um he did sweatpants with Charles Gambino. Yeah. You hear his ad libs, he's like wow and all type of shit on that song. Okay, okay. Um yeah, he rebranded himself and uh they brought him out. He showed love. Uh West Side Boogie got a look, which was really good. Um, I feel like he doesn't get enough love uh as an artist, even though he signed the Eminem and all that shit. But um mm-hmm. him and Kendrick have been friends forever. If you watch the noisy documentary that they did in Compton, mm-hmm. he's like standing in the background with L and the yeah. rest of the niggas. So um It was a big moment for that was for, it was really California. it was a really big moment for LA. It was I feel big- like I feel like that shit was needed. Um, I, you know, I love the beef based on the fact that I, bro, I grew up. I was in elementary when Nas and Hov had their uh, had yeah. their debacle. Yeah, I was in middle school for um, for Fifty and Ja Rule. Yeah. That was fun times. Fun I remember times. being on Kazaa downloading everything, and <laughs> that was that was a good thing. So like. Bro, I'm always a fan of, of the beef. Of the beef, not yeah. not even for like the beefing aspect of it. Just for the music. It's yeah, it's the music. I, so I have pushed them as an artist. Bro, I love the warrior spirit of, of of rap music. Facts. So, the fact that he did this whole concert and he didn't even make it, he really didn't even make it about Drake. Like he really mm. made it about he sung he sung not like us six times. So well, five. He did five, and then the sixth time was when they was walking down the stairs. But um. <laughs> but that's what the people wanted though, bro. The, so the second time he did it, he didn't even say the words. It was the crowd. Bruh, like You can't say that's not about Drake. Then he started with Euphoria. Like Well, yes, but I'm saying like I'm saying the whole thing wasn't about Drake. He of course the people wanted to hear him do those songs. So he, had he done the show and not did a single one of those Drake discs, people yep. would have been mad at him. Yep. But um So you can't say it wasn't about Drake. <laughs> but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when Drake was going against Meek, he did OVO Fest and did uh, did back to back a few times as well. So yeah, that's what the people want, bro. Yeah, what's uh, what's the same? It's provocative. It gets them going. It gets them going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I feel like that was needed. Um, but I think I think overall the uh, the message behind it at the end, even though Drake was getting slided the whole damn the whole damn time, was uh, was a pretty good look. It was good to see. Drake did not get slaughtered, but no, I said slighted, not not oh. slaughtered. They oh. got slighted. It's like he was, he was definitely picked on. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's from the, that's 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 this this. I think this is one of those beefs where it's like most most beefs. It's like a unanimous decision, a clear winner, clear loser. And I think this one is like. There's like clear sides. It's like, it's like, it's like a million people that saying Kendrick destroyed this man, mm-hmm. and it's a but it's the, the equal amount of people saying the fuck you, like what are you talking about, bro? They, Kendrick didn't win this shit, and it's like, this, like I I think for me this is the only beef I've seen like without a clear winner. Like what the like what the fuck happened? Like I how think, did this shit even end? I think Drake. Uh, yeah, you think Drake lost? Well. N- not even that I think he lost. I think he waved the white flag. He he low key waved the white flag. He was like, he he said he said he said, yo boy, like, like I'm tired of doing this shit with you, bro. I'm finna go on vacation, bro. Like nothing you saying is valid, bro. Like you're like Drake called Drake called Kendrick a loser. He like you're a loser, bro. I'm going on vacation. <laughs> I'm finna kick it with some hoes. I'm not finna. But he keep said that after he said that after not like us is already taking off. My thing is like, yeah. But 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 I I love both of them as as artists. He, and, um, Kendrick Kendrick he can't really win not, like the beef with not like us, cause like it's it's a good song. It's a fire song. It's a it's a but like it's not a good diss song. I don't know. It's 
I felt like he went the Drake route. Like, all right, so like. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, he went the Drake route. Okay. He, made a, he made a hit single. He made a hit single. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Which, if you think about it, hey. no, no one was doing that before Drake, bro. <laughs> Takeoff was not getting played in the club. <laughs> Ether was not getting played in the club. You played back the back of the club. I smell pussy was not getting played in the club. <laughs> Clap back was not getting played in the club. Like, nobody was doing that before back to back. So he just hit him with his own thing. It was like, yeah. okay. He just held up the mirror to him. Hey. Yeah. Hey. But, um, bro, I don't feel like either one of their careers is going to go down because yeah, of this. Definitely not. I feel like Drake should take some time and actually structure something solid before he comes back. For sure. He on take vacation. Take the time right and vibe. Now. Yeah, don't. Because that sexy but red he, song was not it. No, my God. That was not what? it, bro. Like, yeah, that was not it. That was a that was a solid verse, bro. That was a fun song. Bro, that was not it. That was a fun song. Bro, the first song, you come back from a beef, especially when the man said you and Sexy Red are like two bad bitches together. They two that bad was, bitches, bro. <laughs> I did was, tell you earlier, bro. No, like, I, feel, I feel you. Bro, like, but Drake a bad bitch. Hey, but that wasn't it, bro. I feel like had he taken the time and actually... Like finesse that BBL jersey beat a little bit more, I would have fucked with it heavier. But I was like, they're not calling me BBL jersey because you're buying BBL. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> did you hear? Did you hear that song? Because you knew that he rapped over the BBL. No, I actually you, heard that. You sexy heard the Red. Album? No, I didn't hear the album. I actually heard that Sexy Red uh, had dropped a song featuring Drake, and I was like, oh, let me go see what this is about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I listened. To, like, like I'm I'm a Sexy Red fan, so I listened to the album all the way through. And I, when I heard the, the, I was like, oh, shit, what the fuck? Like, you, 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 like I, the, I heard the transition. And I was like, okay, I see what you did, but you could have did enough? that better. We're good enough? Nah, I feel like he could. So Maybe I'm biased. No, no. And that's, it's cool to be biased because no, I'm biased sure. with certain artists, too. For sure. Um, my thing is I just, I expect more from him. Drake? Yeah. I, so, bro, I, like, I remember Drake. So, I started listening to Drake when Drake did reference tracks to Wayne. Yeah, he wrote. So, himself. like. I remember hearing Ransom for the first time and be like, oh, this nigga hard. So, like, I, I do hold him to a higher regard when it comes to making music. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I feel like he could have done better. Um, mm. I don't know. Like, I, I do, I feel like I do hold artists to a higher regard because I know, like, what their pen games can be. Yeah. So, if I feel like your pen game is, like, if, if, you're, if you have a weak pen game, then I'm not, I don't care. But if I feel like you actually can write some fire shit... I expect some fire from you. I I respect that. Yeah, I respect that hundred percent, man. It's I like that. it's like your favorite sports team being in the playoffs, and your favorite player is like not doing what the fuck you expect from him. No, I feel that. I yeah, feel that. that's like, that's what it is with me. Come on, man. You supposed to drop thirty tonight, man. I um, I do want to see like where the West Coast goes, um, over the next couple years after after Juneteenth, um. I was kind of sad that Snoop wasn't there, but Snoop and, and Dog Pound are on tour. I don't know if you heard what they've been working on. So Snoop got the whole uh, Death Row back together. Okay. He got Dog Pound. He got uh, East Siders. He got uh, Lady of Rage, RBX, mm -hmm. and Danny Boy. Mm -hmm. And um, they've been making some solid music. That's what's and up, so, so like I was low-key sad that they weren't there because everything they've dropped recently has been fire. Yeah. But, you know, that's... They Neither did. here nor there. They doing um, some good shit, though. I do want to see if Drake's going to do OVO Fest this year, though. Who? OVO Fest? Yeah, no, Drake. You yeah, Drake? I want to see if he's going to do it. Oh, I wonder. Has he done one since uh, since COVID? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. Cause I, I'm not. I'm not looking for that because I'm. I was, I'm not going. No, I feel you, but like it used to be a big thing. So. Yeah, in Canada, right? Yeah. But I don't it used know to be around did. the same time as um. As damn, what was that festival they used to have? I know he there? he was at Dream he was at the Dreamville Fest. He didn't he didn't like some some shit transpired and he didn't go out on stage. But he was he was there mm. when J Cole did that apology. He was yeah, there. I, I wasn't feeling that. Nah, I mean neither. But um, apparently, like I don't know, there there there's, there's stories floating around. But apparently, like Kendrick and J Cole are actually friends, and he was like. This this beef don't really got shit to do with you, bro. Yeah, I, Drake I want. I get that, but it's the art form for me, bro. Like yeah. you, yeah. so so me as a human, I understood where he came from yeah. with his mental health and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm pro mental health and facts. making sure that you're okay and everything facts, like facts, that. Facts, facts, facts. But the rapper in me, I was like, nigga, fuck that. I was like that shit, like, man, bro. take like, his head off. 
<laughs> so, so that's your question to me. Like, I um, like you said, uh, I don't want to hear somebody you dissing. It needs some. Wait, who said he want to hear him apologize? Can I don't want to. I don't want to hear them apologize. I don't that shit. Yeah, I don't want to hear no apologies. I wanted him to call him a pussy fuck bitch. Yeah, I want to hear all the derogative terms you can come with. Yeah, but what can <laughs> we do? What can we do, man? Yeah, you know that's that's how it goes. Um, spread the peace. So I basically asked you the majority of what I had to ask you. Um, anything you want to tell the people? Um, just stay, stay focused, stay tuned. Some petty good shit from the drop. Um, if you, if you're like, if you're a few lucky, um, this is gender neutral. If you a few lucky bad bitch, um. You you have been given the opportunity, or you will be given the opportunity to see, to see some something in the works before um, before the rest of the world. So um, just don't take the opportunity lightly. I mean, yeah, lightly, because you're gonna look back and be like, "Damn, man, I really I witnessed greatness from the start, and I didn't appreciate it." So just just know this shit from the pot, bro, and um, just be happy. Just be happy to be a part of the, the ride humbly and come forward us because we're, we're cool and we'll 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 make you we'll make you some shit specifically for you for your measurements i got i got like this sh- the shears and i got little rotary tools and shit like we're gonna get you we're gonna get, we're so gonna get you, you going cutting and sew this time nah 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 nah, nah but i'll crop it for you i'll I crop it for you i want to learn how to sew but i just found a seamstress i don't know if i showed you these jeans Oh yeah, those are clean. That's clean as fuck. I had to give it that. I had to give it to Chris. That's, That's what's up. Yeah. So just y'all boys just be on the lookout for that because um, shit is is here is here like. It's Actually, here. um, I'm connected with this guy I know who does uh, he does a lot of uh cut and sew stuff here in Miami. Fire, fire. Let and I feel know. like y'all would uh would get along well. He's know. um he's a little bit younger than you. That's that's even better. Um he um. He does cut and sew. He can get you like Japanese denim and stuff like that. Yeah, so I want that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I link me with Brody. I'm have to link. Hell you yeah. Up. I um. I've been mean, wanting want some Japanese yeah, I, denim. I got some free time coming up, so I'll definitely get in with you when we um. Bet. Get the two of y'all together and bet, see bet. what y'all could do bet. for sure. Peace, love. All right, y'all. So that was the first episode of uh, Camino Corner. My brother Kilo here. Um, I do look forward to doing more and having y'all uh, be a part of everything I got coming. Uh, my next episode will be with a few people in the cannabis industry. Um, we're going to speak about things like uh, the upcoming election in November and their thought process on that. Um, if they feel like yes is the right way to vote or no is the right way to vote and um, why they think so and how it's going to affect us in the long run as far as um, the the stores and uh, home growing, things of that sort. But I appreciate y'all tuning in, and I'll see y'all next time. Crack.